Good evening. My name is Henry Dorn, and I have the privilege of serving as the superintendent at Southwest Chicago Christian School. It's my pleasure to welcome you tonight to the commencement ceremony for the 2023 graduating class of Chicago Christian High School, our 103rd commencement ceremony. Congratulations on your accomplishments, seniors, and on a job well done. We are here to celebrate tonight the accomplishments of these young men and women and to send them on to the next stage of their life journey. Speaking on behalf of the faculty, the staff, and the administration, we all look forward to watching God unfold his plan in each of their lives. Over the last four years at high school, we have sought to instill in them that Christ must be at the center of their life, that it is their responsibility to take ownership of their learning, that they are called to be pursuers of justice and caretakers of God's creation in a broken and in a fallen world, and that each of them is a unique image bearer of God with gifts and abilities that need to be developed and explored. We have also strived to prepare these young men and women academically for the next chapter of their lives and instill in them a love of Jesus Christ and an understanding of the grace that is ours through his sacrificial life and death. Our prayer is that these graduates will be followers of Christ. Our world needs young people who have the undying hope that only comes through the knowledge that Jesus Christ is on his throne. May the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives bear much fruit as they live as disciples of Christ. Now we are prepared to send them on their way and thank you for joining us tonight. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather here today for a day of celebration. We thank you for all the sacrifices and love our families have given us throughout the last four years. We thank you for the faculty at this school as we honor them for helping us and encouraging us to get here today. We pray that you continue to guide us as we enter into another chapter of our lives and for us to continue to live like you in this broken world. Help us shine our light in the dark, encourage others and love others even when it may be hard. Lord, we come unto you with humble hearts and ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> if you don't already know me, my name is Jillian Berber, and it is my pleasure to welcome each of you to this time of celebration. I'm probably not the first and surely won't be the last, but I will say regardless, congratulations to the class of 2023. Some of us never thought we'd get this far, and others thought the person sitting next to them would never get this far, <laughs> but here we all are. We made it. We have reason to celebrate. Chicago Christian faculty and staff, thank you for being here. You've shown us what true dedication looks like. Thank you for coming in each day selflessly ready to put us students ahead of yourselves. Thank you for teaching us so much more than mere class material, but vital life skills as well. I think of Mr. Stanton praying before every class period, teaching us to always put the Lord first. I'm reminded of Mrs. White greeting each student who passes her in the hallway teaching us to form relationships with as many people as we can. Even Profe, grittying throughout his classroom, taught us to be unashamed of our personalities. Gracias, Profe. <laughs> Truly, each one of the leaders here cares about us as more than just students. Thanks to each of the teachers and other staff, we are well prepared for the world ahead of us. We have reason to celebrate. Families and friends, we are grateful you are here. You stand beside us no matter what crosses our path. You know us best, and you still decided to come out and support us today. Thanks. But in all seriousness, thank you for all the time you've spent on us. You encourage us when we are at our lowest. 
and you make us laugh when we really need it. We will always remember the effort you put into our well-being. Without the countless meals, rides, and hugs you provided, we would not have made it this far. Whether the next chapter of our lives leaves us close to you or takes us hundreds of miles away, that choked up feeling we get thinking about saying goodbye just proves that we have reason to celebrate. Fellow graduates, well, you pretty much had to come, but nevertheless, thank you for being here. I'm proud of how far this class has come. From freshman year to now, we've learned to build each other up instead of pushing each other aside, which could probably be proved by our past spirit weeks alone. And while some of us might be thinking our reason to celebrate is freedom from high school, if we take the time to reminisce just a bit, we might just see that this place holds some of our best and favorite memories. So even though most of us have been caught saying we can't wait to graduate, in the end, we can agree this place will be dearly missed. As you go on from here, I'll leave you with these words from Colossians 3. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. As we go our own ways after today and scatter all around, keep the Lord at the center of your actions. Remember his promises to you, and you will have reason to celebrate. We have all been so blessed by Chicago Christian, whether we want to admit it or not. So to all of our supporters here today, we say thank you. We won't soon forget our time here. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your encouragement. And thank you for the memories. You are our reason to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Jillian. Before we introduce our academic honors for this evening, I'd like to have a, take us a moment uh, tonight to thank a few people who worked so hard to bring this 103rd commencement and special evening to us all. First, I want to thank Ms. Stefcheck and Mrs. Pod for all their hard work behind the scenes for tonight's. Give a round of applause. And secondly, I want to thank the wonderful teachers and staff who have given so much and worked tirelessly in getting these seniors to this point. None of this is possible without your dedication to your craft. Thank you. Now, before we announce this year's salutatorian and valedictorian, I want to recognize a special group of students for their achievements. With the academic top 10 for the class of 2023, please rise to be recognized at this time. This was an academically competitive class, which is shown by the range in our top 10 this year, which was a 4.48 through a 4.26 for top 10. Now, one of the things I love about CCHS is that we are a school where students have the opportunity to develop all of their God-given talents and abilities. These students were recognized this evening as our salutatorian and valedictorian are great examples of this. Each of them is a wonderful representation of Chicago Christian High School, and they embody what it means to be Christ-centered. We have been blessed by them, and they'll be greatly missed. So when the two names are read, I ask that you come up to receive your award. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to recognize this year's salutatorian award to Joshua Sluis. All right, on. <laughs> All right. on his way to accumulating a 4.43 GPA, Josh took nine honors courses, six AP courses, and four years of our biomedical sciences courses. He was honored as a state scholar, a member of a national honor society, and on the academic challenge team, along with participating in two varsity sports. Josh will continue his studies at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign to major engineering. Congratulations again, Joshua. Now, it is my honor to recognize Caitlin Steinhagen as a valedictorian for the class of 2023. Yeah. 
Caitlin accumulated a 4.48 GPA while at CCHS. During that time, she took nine honors courses, eight AP courses, four years of Spanish, and two years of the engineering classes. She was honored as a state scholar, member of National Honor Society, served as student council vice president, and participated in two varsity sports. Her humble attitude and servant leadership we greatly miss here at CCHS. She will continue her studies at Iowa State University in the fall to major engineering. Congratulations, Caitlin. Thank you, Katie and Josh, for all the work you and perseverance and faithfulness you have shown with your God-given talents here at CCHS. I'm excited to see where the Lord leads you in life. And now it's my privilege to introduce our graduation speaker for this year, Reverend Corey Buchanan. Reverend Buchanan is associate pastor at First Reformed Church in South Holland. He also serves as executive director of the Chicago Land Prison Outreach, the founder and president of Exodus Projects, and the senior pastor of Family Church in Chicago Heights. He holds a degree in pastoral studies and biblical exposition from Moody Bible Institute. He has been a blessing to the CCHS student body as he has spent a few times leading our weekly chapels over the past few years. Thank you, Reverend Buchanan, for accepting this year's senior request for the graduation speaker. If you all can just do me a favor real quick. Can you all just stand for a second? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you may all be seated. <laughs> you may all be seated. Let the record reflect we all have been moved. <laughs> Good evening to the faculty, staff, parents, family, guests, and most importantly, the class of 2023. Congratulations to you all. I'm honored to be your speaker this evening. Special thanks to Superintendent Henry Dorn, Principal Michael Drury, and the Board of Directors. Um, before I get started, would you allow me to breathe a word of prayer? Eternal God, our Father, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We give you praise for all the parents and their sacrifices. We give you thanks for the faculty and staff and their due diligence. And we give you thanks for these incredible graduates. Lord, would you take these few moments to encourage these graduates for the glory and the fame of Jesus Christ. We pray all of this, amen. Thank you again for the honor to speak and to share with you and to encourage you this evening. I recently read a story about bad priorities and a survivor that I wanted to share with you. A husband and wife were attending a county fair where for $20 a person, rides were given on an old airplane. The couple wanted to go up, but they thought $20 a person was just too expensive. So they decided to negotiate with the pilot. They said, we'll pay you $20 for the both of us. The pilot refused the lower price, but he countered and said, how about I'll take you up, and if you don't make a noise, I'll charge you just $20. So they went up. The pilot pulled every trick he knew. He whirled, he looped, he flew upside down, and lots more. Finally, when the plan when the plane landed, the pilot turned around, looked at the husband and said, congratulations, here's your money. You didn't say a single word. He said, nope, but you almost got me when my wife fell out. <laughs> His priorities may have been a little skewed. Surely the husband in this story had bad priorities, but he survived. And I'm going to talk about right priorities in just a few moments. But this story somehow in an unconventional way reminds me of the last four years. Years that will be memorable for you and for the rest of the world. You experienced all kinds of ups and downs. As freshmen, you encountered a global pandemic. 
experienced a shutdown, seeing the world go, to, go into a superhero mode where everyone wore masks to save a friend. You experienced social distance, isolation, um, Zoom classrooms, COVID tests, and so much more. And these were all the things that everyone was dealing with in the world. But you also had your own issues that you were dealing with as a teenager, as a student, as a sibling, as a son, and as a daughter. But today, tonight, as we look back over the last four years, you survived. You are survivors. You are strong. You are successful. You are resilient. And we are proud of you. Let's celebrate these graduates. As I was trying to determine exactly what to share with you today in the few minutes that I had, I, I thought of so many things. Um, I thought I would talk about the dab. Maybe the fact that the D that you were different or the A that you were adaptable or that you were bold believers that would build. But instead, as I looked at the amazing text that you selected as your class verse, 2 Corinthians 13, 11, I thought I would take just a few moments to encourage you from that text that you chose. Now, for me, it was been 25 years since I graduated high school. Needless to say, I'm, I'm getting older. And what I found out, I cannot just jump up and exercise or play a sport at any whim anymore. I got to warm up. I got to stretch. I, 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 I got to get the blood flowing. I, I have to get ready. And that's what some of you have been doing. You have been getting ready. So I got news to share with you. So hold on. Buckle your seatbelt. Today, this celebration does not represent a finish line. It represents a starting line. All you have done so far is warm up. You have been stretching, you have been getting ready, you have been getting the blood boiling in your body. Now is the time where the real race begins. You are at the starting line. And the word that I want to share with you tonight to encourage you is this race. This, this word race is filled with all the right priorities that survivors have. We find this word race in the scriptures or the word running as a metaphor of life. And the scripture that you chose lets me know that you're in a race to run. The text in 2 Corinthians 13, 11 says this, Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of peace will be with you. At the starting line, you need the right priorities to win. At the starting line, you need the right priorities to win. I believe that when we look at 2 Corinthians 13, 11, it gives us the right priorities, and it is race. It says, finally, brothers. This is the last chapter of 2 Corinthians, but it is not the last chapter for the church at Corinth. So just in case so just as the case with you, this is not your last chapter. It is your last chapter of high school, but it is the beginning of a race for you. Our first priority is to rejoice. We rejoice what God has brought us from. We rejoice in what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do. We also understand that joy is one of the chief characteristics of a Christian. We experience, we express our joy through rejoicing, through our outward expression, through our outward worship of God, through our thanksgiving, through our gratitude, through our praise. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you got to make sure that you don't allow the cares of this world to steal your joy. You must protect your joy by keeping your eyes and your hearts on Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. You got to keep praising and worshiping God. Rejoicing is a priority. A, aim. Aim for maturity. It is a priority. Aim and strive with the determination to grow in God. Maturity is often associated with being grown. 
For believers, what it means to be grown, it means that we become children of God. What it means is, is that we no longer lean on our grandmother's faith or our grandfather's faith or our mother's faith or our father's faith, but we have our own faith that we lean on, that, that we have our own relationship and our own walk with the Lord, and our aim is to grow closer and closer to the Lord. Rejoice. It's a priority. Aim for maturity. It is a priority. See, comfort one another. It's beautiful to see so many people here. You haven't gotten here on your own. None of us have gotten here on our own. It has taken a village. It has taken a community to get us here. Yes, it has. Think about it. All of the people in pre-K, elementary school, middle school, high school, youth group, coaches, churches, pastors, family, friends. There were so many people who surrounded you to comfort you and encourage you along the way. And you will continue to need people to comfort and to encourage you. But you also are called to comfort and encourage others. The best thing we can do when we are discouraged is to encourage someone else rejoicing. It is a priority. Aiming for maturity, it is a priority. Comforting others is a priority. E is to exhibit and demonstrate peace. We follow the Prince of Peace. The world is chaotic, but the world needs you to bring peace, to be peacemakers, level-headed, mature followers of Christ that will impact the world. You will impact the world in business, in politics, in social sectors, in public sectors, and in ministry. Our faith is not one that we hide, but it is one that is on display. We are called to impact the world around us, to bring peace to where there is chaos. And the scripture says, and the God of love and peace will be with you. God will always be with you. But do you remember Joseph in the Bible? Joseph in the Bible went through many troubles, but one thing was clear was that God was with Joseph. And how do we know God was with Joseph? Because everywhere Joseph went, there was favor. God favored Joseph, and it was evident that God was with him because favor was with him. I love the text that you have chosen as your class verse because this text seems to correlate with the greatest commandment. Love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. When we love God with all of our being, it makes it easy for us to love the world around us. Our priorities is to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and being, and to love our neighbor as ourselves in the world will be impacted. I'll take my seat when I tell you this last story. It was a Saturday morning. Minister was busy trying to prepare a sermon under some of the most difficult circumstances. It was a rainy day. His young son was restless and bored with little to do. Finally, in desperation, the minister picked up a magazine. He thumbed through it. He came upon this large, brightly colored picture it showed the map of the world. He tore the page from the magazine, ripped it into little pieces, scattered the scraps all over the living room floor, and said these words to his son. Son, if you can put this page together, I'll give you a dollar. The minister hoped that this might take his son most of the morning. 10 minutes later, his son came knocking on the door. He says, Daddy, I'm done. The minister was amazed to see his son had finished the project so soon with the pieces of paper all neatly arranged and the map of the world all put back together. He said, son, how did you do it so fast? His son replied, he said, there was a man on the other side. So I put a piece of paper under it and I flipped it together. And he said, he said I was able to glue it and then I was able to turn it back around. He said, Dad, what I realized is that if I get the man right, then I'll get the world right. And his dad said, son, thank you, because you just helped me preach. <laughs> and that's what God came to do. Jesus came to get us right so that we can get the world right. And so we love, as we love God, he enables us to love people and we can impact the world with all of the gifts, all of the skills, and all of the knowledge that we have. 
Congratulations. Godspeed. Rooting for you. Proud, proud of you. Congratulations. creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we'd hear Christ be magnified Oh, 
for the part we've all been waiting for. Now I want to take a moment to introduce the class of 2023. Yes. <clears throat> so during their time here at CCHS, the class of 2023 has challenged themselves outside of their areas of giftedness, encouraged one another, and helped hold each other accountable. Their early high school experience was a unique one, I saw ever-changing protocols and switched up schedules and events. However, they persevered together through those difficult times to reach this memorable moment. We pray they will continue to use their gifts wisely as an act of worship to God and in service to others. Tonight, I want to highlight what, they have, what has been achieved by the hard work of the young men and women sitting here tonight. So here are some stats about the class of 2023. 69 of them are going straight to a two-year or four-year college. Four are going to the workforce two are enlisted in the military, and one is planning to serve with AmeriCorps. The class as a whole were offered over $5.9 million in scholarship money. Close to 1,600 service hours were completed by this, year, this year alone by our seniors. 19% of our senior athletes will be continuing on in their careers in college. As a group, they contributed to 26 athletic championships over the past four years, including six sectional championships. 21 athletes earned a combination of 47 all-conference selections, Four earned all-state athletic recognition. 66% of them took at least one AP course. Over 36% took at least one Project Lead the Way course. 34% took three years or more of a fine arts or performing arts course. And 12 of them received the Illinois State Scholar Award, an award that is only given to about 10% of all the graduating seniors in the state of Illinois. Truly to be a lot of proud of. Now seniors, well tonight may be the end of your time here at Chicago Christian. It's only the next step in your journey through life. The path may, be, may seem daunting, but life is full of stepping stones, and next year will mark another set of stones for you to cross on this journey through the life, through the life that God has set before you. As I say this to each graduating class, go out in faith, knowing that God is beside you, and remember the words of Psalm 121. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Like the long line of CCHS alumni that have come before you, get up and prepare for the next step. We will miss you. We will look forward to seeing you back on campus and hear about your experiences. We cannot wait to see how God is using each and every one of you and your gifts and abilities to restore his kingdom. And I want to say how immensely proud of each and every one of you I am. I pray you take away this time here at CCHS the importance of relationships and building community with those around you. Do not take anything for granted and give thanks to the Lord for your many blessings. We, as a staff, appreciate you, appreciate you, we love you, we pray for each and every one of you. So family and friends, let's make some noise for the Chicago Christian class of 2023. Now on behalf of the Board of Directors, Administrators, and Faculty of Southwest Chicago Christian Schools, I declare that the members of the class of 2023 have met the requirements for graduation from Chicago Christian High School and are now ready to receive their diplomas.
Tyler William Ackerman. Penelope Bello Loya. Riley J. Brower. Molly Ann Bugis. William David Cece. Morgan Gabrielle Cloman. <laughs> Keely Elise Collier. <laughs> Christian Michael Cook. Ryan Michaela Kuti. Liam Daniel Crotty. Joel Alexander Kroll. Jonathan Shamar Daniels. Anna Grace De Bruin. Merrick Montgomery Denman. Lydia Jane Dirks. <laughs> Kylie Danielle DeVries. <laughs> Veronica Jean Edmond. Anna Marion Enderley. Edmund Patrick Fisher. Tristan Milan Gavin. Henry John Gowron. <laughs> Melanie Nicole Gonzalez. <laughs> Aiden Michael Gorman. Gabriella Samantha Gorski. <laughs> Ray
Rebecca Lynn Rose Brady. Tyrone Joshua Green III. Delaney Catherine Gravengood. Eldoria Janetta Harper. Jacob Taylor Heert. Aaliyah Hermione Hill. <laughs> Howard Cornelius Hoag. Ava Jean Heisinga. <laughs> Megan Ariel Hunter. <laughs> Liliana Beatrice Jebay. Gabriel Andreas Joyce. Elise Susan Koistra. Abigail Coy. Alana Lavelle. <laughs> Eleanor Lee Lorup. <laughs> Hannah Grace Lorup. Manny William Lopez. <laughs> Noah Patrick Ray Mason. <laughs> Alexander Sage Medima. Ella Grace Alana Novak. <laughs> Lyric Michelle Peters.
Jonathan Clarence Powell. Kyle Paul Powers. Lindsay Anne Marie Quick. Liliana Faith Rivera. Anthony James Roebuck. Holland Kathleen, Kathleen Rumbuck. <laughs> Joshua Andrew Reinberg. <laughs> Seth Andrew Skipma. <laughs> Elizabeth Grace Sedakis. Abigail Grace Siles. <laughs> William Robert Slager. <laughs> Joshua James Sluice. Caitlin Sophia Steinhagen. Matthew Russell Stevens. Casey Lynn Stewart. Camillo Franklin Strombaum. Adam Peter Stursma. Naya Simone Teague. Jordan Simone Thomas. <laughs> Josie Claire Treasonberg. Cameron Grant Baldick. Yeah. 
Ethan John Vandewerken. Nathan Thomas Vandenbosch. Joshua Harold Vandervelde. Jonah Richard Van Dyke. Benjamin Thomas Ventland. Jillian Rose Verver. <laughs> Bethany Grace Walter. <laughs> Kaylee Lynn Workman. Kayla Marissa Elizabeth Yukawa. <laughs> William James Zabraki. Congratulations, class of 2023. We're proud of you. No, don't. Would you please join me in prayer? Dear loving Heavenly Father, your steadfast love never ceases. Your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. What a wonderful evening we've had celebrating the class of 2023. You have blessed them with a wide variety of gifts. You have given them friendships that will last a lifetime. You have helped them persevere, even through a pandemic. You have promised to give them hope for their futures. Great is your faithfulness. We ask now that you guide them in using these gifts as they move forward with the plans you have set before them. Help them to hold on to the friendships they've made, so as life brings challenges, they can encourage each other and strengthen their faith in you. May the perseverance they've developed sustain them as they face complicated situations, trusting in the hope that comes only from you. We're so thankful for everyone who has come to celebrate this evening with our graduates. What a blessing these family, friends, and school community members have been. We are grateful for the many prayers they've offered and encouragement they've given to these students on their journey. Everyone attending this evening is a gift from you. Great is your faithfulness. May we all continue to pray for and encourage these young people in the years ahead. Above all, Lord, we are humbled and grateful that we can glorify and praise you in our time together. None of this happens without your hand leading and guiding every step of the way. May we continue to see your mercies every morning. May we trust that you are good all the time. May we never stop believing in your promises. 
great is your faithfulness. We love you, Lord, and may we continue to serve you each day in the gracious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.